afternoon, I'm Molly Benz and tonight we have four top stories. First off, we have Gabrielle on the scene in Colorado. Ludlow coal miners have gone on strike against the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company. And 9,000 miners, miners have walked out. Strikers are furious from the awful condition in the coal companies. Miners are coming together to, to demand higher wages, better treatment, and the right to live anywhere they want. I'm here with slave rebellion leader John Lawson, who created most of the demands and presented them to the coal company with more information. Our demands aren't being met and we are on strike to get our message across. We were treated like slaves and it was time to rebel. Thank you for speaking, Mr. Lawson. Oh look, Mother Jones is on the scene. Currently Mother Jones is being questioned, questioned and processed for imprisonment. I am a strong supporter of getting children out of these mines. Last week I held signs that read, we want to go to school and not to the mines, in support of these poor children. I was also there to give my support and speeches and hope to give the strikers a little. During all of this, a train operator was running his train past the coal mines and attempted to stop the crazy massacre. The operator saved many lives and opened the door for Louis Tychus to start taking the women and children to safety. Sadly, when Tychus came back, he was kidnapped and didn't survive. Guns were fired as it went into the tent colony. Among the lives taken, 11 children and two women were suffocated in the underground trenches. For 10 days now, the strike miners in the tent colony have been at war. Today is day 10 of them attacking and destroying mines and fighting with mine guards and their militia for 40 miles. Over 40 minor, miners and their family members have been murdered and more and more are still being found. The House Committee on Mines released a report that stated two reforms, child labor laws and set an eight hour workday. Moving east to Chicago, Sarah Bonta is live with Upton Sinclair. The Jungle, a book by Upton Sinclair, exposes Chicago's meatpacking in Packing Town. The workers had awful conditions and suffering with low pay. How were the conditions for these workers? The pay was barely over one dollar per day. This could hardly support any family. Was it required to have a certain skill level to get hired? Like in my book, workers were picked out of a line for their build. You didn't have to know English or any skills. Jurgis hardly spoke the native language, but he was still able to work. What is the special meat that was packaged and sold for a higher price? Was it really better meat? Not at all. The meat was poisoned, diseased, and just not safe. The company would beef it up and make it look real. The special marking meant it tasted a little different, but what people didn't know was that it wasn't good for you at all. It made people sick, and the company made lots of money off this. What was it like to work inside of these buildings? Piles of rotting meat sat in the corners of the room with layers of rat filth on them. Puddles of blood were all over the floor. It was all around disgusting. Wow. Well, thank you for agreeing to interview, Mr. Sinclair. I'm sure your insight has opened many eyes around the world. Now to you, Molly. Thanks, Sarah. After Sinclair's book was released, reforms were made to the working community. New laws were introduced, such as minimum wage, no more child labor, and health and safety conditions. The meat is now inspected by government hired workers who will hopefully do a better job labeling what's safe and what is not. Our next story is in Colorado. Breaking news. Lumber companies are wasting forests that took centuries to grow. With these occurrences, we're going to run out of trees. Another problem is water scarcity. Gabrielle Picard is live at a stream that is slowly going dry. As you can see, the stream has a scarce amount of running water. The community and so the world as a whole is going to run out of fresh water if the government doesn't do something about it really soon. Back to you, Molly. Thank you, Gabrielle. Now we turn to Sarah in Colorado, where trees are being cut and chopped down left and right by lumber companies. Sarah, how is the community feeling about their beloved forest? Well, Molly, as you can see, lumber companies are clearing paths to develop new industries but some people just do not like it. I'm here with a citizen in the community to hear what he has to say. I hate to see my backyard that used to be filled with beautiful trees become a flatland. These trees and forests took century to, centuries to grow and now they will never be put back. It just upsets me and Roosevelt needs to take action to help fix the problem. That was Sarah Bonta in Colorado where forests are becoming limited. Reports say Roosevelt is conservatist 
or an environmentalist, and believes one of the glories of nature is one of the glories of the United States. He has held a conference, and he is arguing for responsible stewardship. Roosevelt has passed a new act, which is the Newlands Reclamation Act. The act is proclaiming federal money to develop out west. Roosevelt has said the best way to develop the country is to develop the res resources, but to be careful about them. It seems to me Roosevelt wants to strike a balance. The new act is giving federal money to develop parts of the out west while helping to preserve natural resources. Roosevelt has put limitations on how many trees you can cut down in certain areas. Question is now, why is Roosevelt using federal money to support this act? Sarah has the answer live at the White House. Roosevelt has said in interviews that putting federal money towards land conservation is a better idea than the option of letting private companies do it. Because private companies will cut down as many trees as they can to make the most of their money. Our president is using the power of the government to balance business and the environment. Theodore Roosevelt has increased the number of national forests to 149, resulting in 190 million acres. Now what is the solution of the lack of water? Turn to Gabrielle for her take. The Newlands Reclamation Act has allowed 16 western states to build large dams and canal systems to conserve water for irrigation. This, the country is hoping this will help the water issue, and we will check back in a couple of months to see how the dams are coming along. As of now, this is Gabrielle Picard reporting live. Thanks, Gabby. Our next story is about the new Interstate Commerce Act. Uh, I am Ernesto Cifes Ramirez, and I recently spoke with a former worker of a business whose name we cannot release. He explained why he quit and how he now supports his Interstate Commerce Commission. The company I worked for had been taking advantage of the public. They created trusts and pools which forced competitors out of business, leaving the big businesses to run a monopoly. The Interstate Commerce Act is working to stop unfair business practices like what was going on at my former company. This act prohibits the railroad companies especially, preventing them from driving up their rates without telling the public. I completely support the Interstate Commerce Commission, also known as ICC. I hope the big businesses are taken down and customers get treated right. Thank you, Ernesto. That wraps up tonight's stories. This is World News. Have a nice evening.